Conversation and analysis. Conversation and debate. This is Sunday Journal. Hello, I'm Bud Foster, and welcome to this edition of Sunday Journal. Got something interesting in the mail the other day. A newspaper, well, that in itself is not unusual. Uh, the newspaper is, it is called Speak Up America. It is called the biggest little newspaper in the United States. And as I read through some of the articles here, I decided that I would like to speak to the editor of this newspaper, and that's who we have here with us today. His name is Chuck Diaz, and he is the publisher of Speak Up America, the biggest little newspaper in the USA, and it says, America deserves the truth. Uh, tell me what this is all about. Uh, well, first of all, uh, I do believe that America deserves the truth. And uh, had you been uh, receiving uh, Speak Up America uh, since, I, since I started putting it out, you'd find out that uh, I believe that the media doesn't exactly give America the whole truth. Uh, in fact, uh, you could quote a time... Uh, a Los Angeles Times uh, poll that they took whereby 83 percent of the people polled were unhappy with the job that the media is doing and uh, basically I'm probably uh, not probably I'm one of those one of that 83 percent what do you mean you're one of that 83 percent that I don't know you you're one of the people who don't doesn't believe that the the media is doing a credible job that's correct uh, and so now you, you started this newspaper because of that. Now, tell me how this came about. Give me the genesis of, of what happened here. Uh, I had been in an automobile accident, and uh, I was watching an awful lot of C-SPAN. And uh, back in 1991, they were, uh, they were uh, the Senate and the House were discussing the Civil Rights Bill. And uh, I happened to be, I'm proud to say that I'm an American of, uh, American of Mexican descent. I'm not Hispanic. I'm not a Mexican-American, and I'm not a Latino. I think those terms were created in the last 20 years, and uh, I'm an American of Mexican descent. I'm opposed to affirmative action. I think that affirmative action is, trying to, is like trying to fix a 100-yard dash by having all the starters start in different positions so they'll end the race exactly at the same time. Uh, being opposed to affirmative action and listening to people like uh, uh, the likes of Kennedy or somebody like that telling telling uh... the world how what kind of help we need because we are minorities I, I i don't buy that at all america is uh... a land that gives you an opportunity and if you've got anything going for you you can you can you can uh, do something with it now, and back to the genesis of the, of the newspaper how c-span yeah as, C -SPAN re as, 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 as a result yeah. as a result i wrote an article because along with being opposed to affirmative action i'm opposed to bilingual education i think that's the worst thing you can do to a kid is to graduate him and have him not speak English. And uh, so I wrote an article that was published in the uh, Tucson Citizen. Uh, that started me on the radio circuit here in, here in town from one radio station to another. And having been a publisher before, I found out when I first started publishing something, even though that was a industry vertical uh, uh, publication, that people have an awful lot of respect for something that is written, okay? And they'll they'll read it instead of just trying to tell it to tell tell it to them. So I decided to put my thoughts in uh, on paper. Uh, the first one was January of 1992. I mailed out 13 to my closest friends and relatives, and uh, here we are today. And now, how many do you do you have today? I'm mailing out uh, 2,000 this month. Uh, uh, about half of them are uh, are subscriptions, and uh, we have plans to increase our subscription base. To about 125,000 next year. Now, now, there's no advertising uh, in this, and, and why do you not depend uh, on advertising? I, I, I think America is ready. I think America is ready for a dollar newspaper with no advertising. I think America is ready for a newspaper that'll print the truth. Okay, and if you haven't uh, decided by now, I, I would think that we might be able to say that this newspaper is a conservative newspaper. Is, am, I, am I being right? And now we in the media like to label things and people and such. Uh, would I be uh, uh, way off base if I said this was a rather conservative newspaper? Uh, you, you could call it conservative if you want. I'd like to call it correct. All right, so we'll just meet someplace in the middle here. Now, the newspaper says it is dedicated to the return of common sense in our laws. Now, mm -hmm. what do you mean by that? Common sense, uh, it seems to me that uh, common sense has been uh, kind of sidetracked. There's an awful lot of uh, a lot
lot, an awful lot of things that are just obvious to human nature that are either right or wrong. Uh, our laws are being made to, or, or there are laws that are being created that exclude common sense. Uh, to try to describe common sense would probably take, you know, an eight-hour program. But, 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 uh, uh, and to, I don't have one right off the top of my head, that, but there's an awful lot of common sense that's just being overlooked. And it says, a return to morality in our decisions. Uh, morality has gotten a bad rap uh, by our society. Uh, uh, for some reason or another, uh, there are people who think that there are more than one kind of morality. Uh, there are, I've, I've read and heard on the media, there's a black morality, so a white person shouldn't put his white morality on a black person, and a black person shouldn't put his black morality on a white person, or a, an American of Mexican descent shouldn't put, you know, all, this, all these moralities. I, I think morality is, is, is knowing the difference between right and wrong. And there's no black, there's no white, there's no uh, uh, Latin. Right is right and wrong is wrong. And I think we all know it inside. And so you don't see any gray areas in here at all? Absolutely not. Okay, you continue on uh, saying uh, it is also dedicated to the elimination of any obscenity reaching our kids. You know, what do you consider obscene? Uh, 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 the, 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 the official definition of obscene uh, being a community standard type thing, uh, I have no argument with, with any of that. Uh, if people want to uh, uh, create uh, uh, R-rated movies, X-rated movies, or anything like that, in the adult world, I have no problem with anything. What I have a problem with is whatever we do define uh, as, uh, as obscene at a community level, that it shouldn't reach our kids in any way. Okay? And uh, there, are, there, there are too much access to obscenity to our kids right now. Okay, and then finally, the proliferation of environmental truth. That's, uh, that's uh, a very, very key part of Speak Up America because whether you consider the newspaper on the right side or the left side, we will always be, or we have always had the opportunity to argue, Democrat, Republican, whatever, whatever. But we were Americans doing that. And uh, the uh, birth of the environmental movement, I believe, will eliminate our ability to argue left and right. The environmental movement is, uh, is, is, is not only... Uh, a, a, a movement that wants to save the planet. It's an ideology. It's a, it's a religion. Uh, it is uh, anti-property rights. It is, uh, it's anti a lot of things that will eliminate our ability to argue as liberal and, and, and conservative. Don't, so, don't you think that they're also out there to try to save the planet, or do they have a political agenda? Oh, I believe they definitely. I, I believe that the environmental movement is probably made up of many, many, many segments. I would say your average tree hugger is probably a pretty nice person, okay? But then you then you have the then you have the development of the whole thing, uh, uh, whereby I believe that uh, social socialists and there are socialists. The socialists used to run for president of the United States in this country. Socialism's been around since Plato, okay? They just haven't had a real good, uh, they haven't had a real good uh, uh, headline to sell. And so they never really did very well in America. Well, they've, they've really, the, envir the environmental movement is the socialist flagship in America. Now, you say that you're dedicated to the truth. America deserves the truth. Now, mm -hmm. what do you mean by that? I believe that, there's, that there is, that America, over the past 20 or 30 years, has been conned in a way and and whether whether or not it's by someone or we've conned ourselves or whatever I, I i couldn't tell you but uh there has been a, su a successful uh elimination of the truth in conversation um you can you can have two people discussing an issue and uh using an environmental issue as an example if i were to come out and say there are, are more trees today in the United States than there were 70 years ago, uh, someone would say, well, that's because you're a representative of the logging industry. That's the only reason you said that. And in our world today, that seems to negate what I said. It doesn't make any difference if it's the truth. But because I said it and I, I am perceived as a, as a uh, front man for the logging industry, well, then negate what he said. And it seems like that happens in discussions of many, many issues today. It's 
the opinion, and if the opinion can be, can be uh, thought of as pure opinion, with no connections, no agenda, and the truth just kind of lays there on the side and doesn't get recognized. And, and why, why has that happened? Why do you think that has happened? Well, uh, I'd say since the 60s, okay, there's a lot of things that have happened. Uh, the the uh, the uh, the moral decay of the country, the uh, the me generation, the uh, break up of the family, the, the break unit. up of the family unit. There's a whole lot of things. Uh, uh, the the I can do anything myself, and I don't care if I'm part of a society. If I don't harm anybody, it's okay, and all this kind of stuff like that. Uh, the breakdown of societal rules. Okay, uh, and 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 yet there still are some. Uh, you you won't go down uh, speedway at 105 miles an hour. Okay, so you so people do respect certain rules, but there are other rules that they consider more personal. That uh, you know nobody can say anything because I don't care what and all this kind of stuff like that. All that over the since since the 60s. Uh, all right, um, Chuck Diaz will be back in just a moment. Mr. Diaz doesn't like the networks: NBC, ABC, CBS, and CNN news networks. We'll tackle that subject right after this break. Welcome back now as we continue our discussion with Chuck Diaz, who is the publisher of the newspaper here called Speak Up America. He calls it the biggest little newspaper in the United States. Now, you don't care very much for the news product that NBC, CBS, ABC, and CNN uh, put out to the public. Uh, what's your complaint with them? Let me give you an example. Back in 1991, the Smithsonian had a, had a, had a conference, and all of the heads of ABC, NBC, CBS, Time Warner, all of them were there. Uh, during that uh, during that conference, the subject was uh, global uh, climate. Are we overreacting? And it was basically on global warming. Um, they brought every doomsayer in the world. Paul Ehrlich was was uh, 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 forecasting famine again. You know, except this time the famine is going to happen in the mid 2000s because his last one didn't work. And uh, 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 they were just paraded in front of all these people. Finally, the science editor of Time magazine, and I forgot, I forgot his name, uh, 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 came out and said, you know, that after this, and uh, after this meeting, uh, it's obvious that the, uh, that the media has taken a pro-environmental disaster uh, uh, position, okay? And so uh, even on, on one of the C-SPAN uh, 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 programs, I watched uh, one of the key writers for Time Magazine who, who agreed. They, they do not treat global warming objectively. They don't, they, they, they don't treat uh, any of the environmental matters objectively. They are in support of them. That's not newscasting. So when you take that kind of an attitude and you have a CNN with Ted Turner and, and Hanoi Jane doing the very same thing in their specials and their attitude and their agenda on the programs, and then all you work with at a local level are, are feeds that come, come down from I don't know where that say, you know, this is happening and this is happening, then the whole, the whole country is, is, is hearing what just a few are saying. But, you'll, but you won't put on, on your night, nighttime uh, 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 newscast that the Marshall Foundation came up with a whole, a whole bunch of facts about the global warming being a, a myth. The Washington Post three weeks ago came out with a headline story, it looks like global warming is a myth. The fact that uh, Steven, Steven Schneider, the number one proponent of global, global warming in the United States, uh, uh, who is also, by the way, the programmer who programmed the computer model, okay, uh, is going around saying things that if you if you need to make your point it's okay to lie come up with scary scenarios and 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 basically it's okay to lie as long as your story gets through so when you have that kind of thing being perpetuated by the media down to the local level you can't trust it are you, do you are you saying that the local media the the national media the mainstream media lies to the general public i say that they have an agenda I say that uh, when PBS, for an, for an example, uh, there was there was one uh, one hour documentary that was made that knocks the legs right out from under the global warming theory. It's called the Greenhouse Conspiracy. Uh, uh, PBS refused to show it. The producer of PBS, Alinda Harar, said 
when she refused to show it nationally, said, I don't think it's necessary to, to, uh, to uh, show every single point of view, okay? The next thing, Discovery Channel purchased the TV rights to it, showed it once and shelved it. Now we're passing it around. The United States, like the French underground, passed things around during World War II because it happens to show an opposing position that you don't see on, on, uh, on the national media. Now, if you want to call the elimination of something lying, then it's a lie. But they do. They will not show something or not say something as well as only talk about what supports their position. And the media does have a position. Do you think the media has a liberal agenda? Is that, that the accusation here? Uh, I don't want to be... I don't want to be a, a liberal hate or perceived as a liberal hater. I'll just say that uh, in a poll about a year or so ago, something like 85% of the media are, are uh, quote-unquote liberals. Uh, uh, I believe, I personally believe that the, the national dominant media is liberal, yes. And what would you define as a liberal? A... Uh, uh, Obviously, a person who's not a conservative. Yeah, that's for darn sure. Okay, and I'm trying to say wh which issue should I come out on? Okay, uh, 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 definitely uh, on the left side of all issues with more freedoms, uh, uh, more uh, more acceptance of. I notice you talk about socialism. In, yes. In, in, yes. In, so somebody who leans more towards the socialism. Towards, yeah. Uh, in the spectrum of politics. Okay. Uh, liberals are in the same direction of, as socialists, okay? Where they actually touch and how far left they have to be, I don't know. I will not call a liberal a socialist, okay? But they're on the left side of the political spectrum. Now, I noticed uh, uh, some of the articles here, many of the articles here are penned by yourself, but you also have some contributing authors, uh, writers. Uh, who are these folks? Uh, I've gone everywhere from uh, buying an uh, article from Forbes, to, uh, 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 there's one article in there uh, that uh, was uh, donated to me when I asked for it from Destiny Magazine uh, to uh, grassroots people who are concerned about uh, America, who are concerned about uh, uh, some of the things that, we, that I always do write about, and they, they, they uh, send me uh, articles all the time. I get an awful lot of articles. Hey, you get articles in mail. What kinds of uh, mail do you get, and, and from whom? I get uh, from everybody. Uh, uh, you take, for an example, the, the one on the, uh, on the acid rain hoax was written by an engineer architect in Paducah, Kentucky, you know, and uh, he's written a, a, cu a couple of more. I get uh, a, 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 a woman who works for a graphics firm in, in Oregon, uh, a fellow who lost his job, a logger uh, in Washington. Uh, I get them from from the grassroots people who are who are really really starting to get concerned about uh, about America. Well, I'm what, now from the letters you get. Uh, what, mm -hmm. what do these people perceive to be some of the biggest problems and biggest challenges that we face? Uh, they are mostly concerned in the environmental movement. Okay, right now there are pro approximately 25 million Americans that are involved in what is called the wise use movement. Okay? okay. I need to stop you. The wise use movement. We'll come back and we'll talk about that and a few other things as we conclude our discussion with Chuck Diaz. Discussion with Chuck Diaz. Um, the wise use movement you were talking about. Yes, the wise use movement uh, is, consists of approximately 25 million Americans who are getting fed up with environmental extremism. Uh, it first started, uh, uh, revolved around property rights issues. It has now gone into off-road issues, uh, uh, global warming issues. I mean, there's organizations, there's approximately 2,500 to 3,000 grassroots organizations who, by the way, are not getting any uh, corporate funding from anybody uh, uh, that have popped up around the United States to try to fend off environmental extremism and some of the extremist uh, regulations that we've had handed down. Mm -hmm. Now, let's talk a little bit about the, uh, the White House. Um, your opinions, uh, I, I've read the editorials here, so I, I, know, I know what he's going to say. Um, your opinions of the White House, what's being done in Washington? During, during, during the campaign, Bill Clinton said two things many times. He said, he said that during the 80s, the middle class paid more taxes than any other time in history. 
That happens to be true, by the way. He also said, and at the same time, their, their, their average wage dropped. That's also true. But the way it's been presented makes it sound like something bad. I call that an incomplete truth. Now I'll finish the truth. During the 80s, the middle class paid more taxes than any other time in history. That's true. But they paid because there were more working. As a group, they paid more taxes, not as individuals. The average wage also went down. That's true. But if you have a, an employee making $20 an hour and one making $10 an hour, the average wage is $15 an hour. If you add another $10 an hour employee, the average wage drops to $12.50. Again, the result of something good happening. When somebody does that, when somebody manipulates a fact to forward their own agenda, I call that wrong. For the President of the United States to do something like that, which he does constantly, I call that wrong. I call that lying to the people, and you don't need to do that. If what you, need, if, if what you have is so good, you shouldn't have to lie. If what you have is so good, you shouldn't have to con. You shouldn't have to get, like for an example, what happened in, the, uh, in this uh, last uh, vote on the budget. I think every American knows darn good and well that America did not want that passed. And yet, people like DeConcini will give us all of these half-baked uh, uh, reasons for why it's good for us. Clinton will continue to do that. It's wrong. And wrong is wrong. Common sense tells me that, my gut tells me that, and it tells the Americans that too. What about Congress? How do you feel about Congress, what it's done over the as past As far years? as I'm concerned, Congress has, has, has just fallen into a bipartisan pit, uh, uh, as proven by this last, by this last vote. Okay? When it comes down to what is going to be good for America and what's going to be good for our party, they'll vote party line. And so Congress is just, uh, you know, I, I, I don't trust them. Uh, they, uh, they've lost their honor as far as I'm concerned. In fact, this is in one of the past articles uh, a year ago. I wrote uh, a, a lead story that was entitled, uh, you know, A Congress Without Honor. Now, what would you suggest that Congress, the White House, and other politicians might need to do in order, one, to capture back that, uh, uh, that honor? Try, try, try honesty. Try not conning people. Try not getting up on, in, in front of a television camera and telling us what we know we don't want, why we should have it. You know, get, get in touch with the people. Uh, uh, it, it, it's too bad that we would have to pass a law for term limitations. But I believe that when the forefathers started, started this country and they, and they developed the idea of a two-year House of Representatives, what they really wanted was is they wanted the, the, the drugstore attendant, the, uh, the guy that worked at, a, at, a, at, a, at that time, maybe a, you know, a horseshoe guy or something like that. They wanted them to just go serve the country for a couple of years and go back. A fresh new batch of ideas. They didn't want career politicians. Right? But when you have career politicians that are only concerned with one thing, and that's being reelected, we're we've got a big problem here. We've got a giant problem. Now we've got about a minute or so left. Let's move west here a little bit. You uh, you lived in Los Angeles for a long time. Uh, what do you think about Hollywood's influence? I think that during World War II, the influence that Hollywood had on the United States was shown, and it was a great influence. They helped uh, raise uh, money for war bonds. They did some of the greatest things in the world. Every, every, everyone from, from John Wayne to, to uh, Bugs Bunny, okay, was let's get, let's, you know, let's get together and kick Hitler in the butt and all this kind of stuff like that. Uh, that proved that Hollywood is a very powerful sword. But put that sword in the wrong hand and we've got a big problem. And, and it's in the wrong hand today. All right. Thank you very much, sir. It's Chuck Diaz, the name of the news. Speak up, America. Call us here at KGUN 9. We'll give you the phone number for Mr. Chuck Diaz, and you can become a subscriber. We'd also like to hear from you about this program or any other program we've done on Sunday Journal. And you can do that by writing to us here at KGUN 9, Post Office Box 17990 here in Tucson. Uh, by the way, Speak Up America is also published here in Tucson. Uh, that zip code is 85731-7990. I'm Bud Foster. Thank you for joining us on this edition of Sunday Journal. We'll see you next time. Ha ha ha!
Thank you.